kids are at home all across Taiwan. That's because in-person classes have been canceled. The whole nation is now under a level three COVID alert due to the biggest domestic outbreak since the pandemic began. Also in today's show, Taiwan's ambassador to the U.S., Xiaobi Kim, tells us about U.S.-Taiwan ties under the Biden administration. And in hashtag Taiwan, Leslie Liao shows us the empty streets of Taipei under level three COVID alert. This is Taiwan Insider. Face masks are now required whenever you leave the home in Taiwan. Now, as you can see today, we are sitting at a distance, right? That's right. Yes. Hi, Andrew. Hi. <laughs> we also have this uh, little divider in between the two of us. Now, something else that's happened this past week, schools are closed and also lots of non-essential businesses. And of course, that's because we are now at a level three COVID alert all across Taiwan. Natalie, were you surprised by how quickly things changed? I was surprised. Last week we were at level two, right? Mm -hmm. And only double digits. So I, last week I wasn't nervous at all. But <laughs> this week a little nervous. <laughs> I was a little nervous. <laughs> and it's spread really quickly. And, you know, unfortunately, I, I think that the loopholes we had has really led to the major, like, you know, with the pilots, mm -hmm. not having to do quarantine 14, for 14 days, not having to get vaccinated. You yeah, know, so these little things have just let the virus seep in and then there's super spreader industries like the red light district mm -hmm. and clubs social clubs you know things like that just just make it spread really quickly yes now the question right now is the current restrictions how quickly will we know whether or not they've worked here's what the experts have to say this past week taiwan has been dealing with the biggest domestic outbreak since the pandemic began the total number of local cases has now surpassed imported ones. A lot of focus has been on the hundreds of new cases announced each day, but epidemiologist Dr. He Meixiang says people who test positive in the next two weeks actually caught the coronavirus before May 15th, when level three restrictions went into place. She says Taiwan must increase its testing capacity. That's the only way to tell how many cases there really are. Dr. He says that for every serious case of COVID, there could be at least nine other asymptomatic cases. That means there could be 1,400 or more infected people out there that have not yet been tested. Dr. He says recent clusters at the Wanhua Tea Houses and the Lions Club started from super spreader events. These events involve a lot of people who are talking, singing, and having physical contact without any social distancing, she says. If someone with the virus is there, it doesn't matter if they're a super spreader or not, the virus is going to spread. So when will we know if Taiwan has contained the outbreak? Infectious disease expert Dr. Wang Renxian says if the measures are working, the case numbers will go down in two weeks. He says it will take at least six weeks for life to return to normal. For now, the key to stemming the outbreak is social distancing, and if you can, stay home. Well, I do hope it just takes six weeks to contain this outbreak. Now, citizens of Taiwan do have a pretty good track record of, you know, following COVID rules. Absolutely. You know, every time you have to enter a store or a restaurant, you also have to register online to let people know where you are, just in case you need to be, you know, contact tracing needs to take place. Now, this past Wednesday, the government rolled out a brand new system which is going to make contact tracing even easier. And that digital registration, anytime you enter a store or restaurant, have a look. All of Taiwan is now under a level three COVID alert. This means that people must leave their name and phone number at businesses they visit. The idea is to provide officials with a better idea of a person's movements should they contract COVID-19. But every business has its own methods of registration, and people who visit several places have to provide their information all over again at every stop they make. Thanks to Taiwan's cabinet, though, those concerns are now yesterday's problems. The government has come out with a new system for registering personal information at businesses. All you need to do is scan a QR code. 
This will generate an automatic message which will send your information to the government's health authorities. Taiwan's new reality may come with its share of inconveniences, but thanks to the government, leaving your information is as easy as one, two, three. Now, one thing that's really important to mention is that SMS that it's going to send, that is completely free. If you'd like some more information, we'll have it for you in the show notes below. There's a lot of anxiety in Taiwan right now over COVID. And remember, Andrew, about six months ago, people were anxious about another big thing, which was the U.S. election. That's right. And they were nervous about if Biden becomes president, is he going to be, you know, close with Taiwan? Yeah, I think people were under the assumption that Trump was better for relations with uh, Taiwan. However, on Tuesday, for the fifth time since Biden took office in January, the U.S. sent a warship through the Taiwan Strait. That's the USS Curtis Wilbur that you can see there. And of course, this is as China continues to send warplanes near Taiwan. Last week, I had the privilege of speaking with Taiwan's ambassador to the United States, Xiaobi Kim. Now, I asked her what she saw so far in Biden's policy towards Taiwan. And this is what Ambassador Xiao had to say. They have emphasized Taiwan as a leader in democracy and also a very important security and economic partner. And um, the previous administration had described Taiwan as a force for good. If you bring the force for good, a, a leader in democracy and a critical partner in security and economics, uh, that does uh, kind of characterize the broad relationship that we have. We appreciate the strong support and the Biden administration has used the phrase rock solid um, in our relationship. Um, and the continuity and support does reflect that it is a rock solid in a bipartisan way as well. And we appreciate uh, the many bipartisan members of Congress that are also playing an important role uh, in this relationship. Uh, the Biden administration has on numerous occasions uh, reassured uh, their continuing support of Taiwan uh, in our international space, in Taiwan's security, um, and also um, in many areas of our bilateral relationship, uh, including education cooperation, science and technology cooperation, uh, Coast Guard uh, cooperation and humanitarian rescues, um, there's so much in our relationship, and we do look forward to continuing the partnership. And you had mentioned that uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that the U.S. commitment to Taiwan is rock solid. So what do you think he means by that? Well, I, I do believe that, and I said this on um, the day of President Biden's inauguration, is that is uh, we share interests and we share values. Um, our common values are freedom and democracy. Our interests um, are in the peace and stability of the region, as well as economic prosperity. And, uh, and that is certainly what, what binds our, our societies, our peoples, our governments uh, together in joint efforts um, in advancing those values and interests. Um, Taiwan stands on the front line uh, in facing uh, multiple challenges uh, to our democratic system. And uh, US support for us uh, is, is very important. Um, I do believe that rock solid support uh, involves um, support in many areas, and that is um, demonstrated um, in U.S. leadership in, uh, as you mentioned, the uh, joint G7 statement, uh, U.S. leadership in calling on the global community to support Taiwan's international participation, and also uh, U.S. leadership in uh, continuing uh, freedom of navigation operations uh, in the region um, as a strong deterrence um, against any consideration of unilateral military action that would upset the status quo. Well, Ambassador Shaw, I'd also like to ask you about the lighter side of um, diplomacy. Taiwan sometimes uses humor to deal with its challenges uh, with China and with the WHO. Uh, for example, last year when Taiwan was having tensions with the WHO. Uh, the WHO director had accused Taiwan of some racist attacks. And then we responded with this hashtag, this attack comes from Taiwan. And there are pictures of beautiful beaches from Taiwan, delicious food. And President Tsai even tweeted a picture of her with her cats. And uh, she had said that 
You know, we don't have a first lady or first gentleman in Taiwan. We have first cats. And recently this year, we had a hashtag freedom pineapple campaign when China decided to ban the import of Taiwanese pineapples. And I know that you were gifting a lot of people uh, in town with dried pineapples from Taiwan. And former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo had tweeted a picture of himself enjoying that snack saying, as a proponent of freedom, enjoying some Taiwanese dried pineapple, checkmate, he was playing chess. So um, how would you describe the use of humor in Taiwan's soft power and diplomacy? Well, I, I think Taiwan is one of the most open, uh, diverse, and uh, innovative, uh, creative societies uh, in, in um, East Asia. And um, our, our people are really taking advantage of that open uh, freedom of speech, that space for innovation and in being creative uh, about um, having our voice heard uh, in the international community and uh, having Taiwan's presence um, felt in a positive and constructive way. And uh, Taiwan uh, does want to be uh, supportive and, and playing a, a, a positive role uh, in, in the international uh, organizations um, and international society. We do want to utilize the many um, characteristics of our culture and our society uh, in the process of uh, securing greater support, whether it involves um, food, um, <laughs> culture, uh, pineapples, uh, music, <laughs> or sports. You know, last year we were um, there, there were a few months where Taiwan was the only country in the world playing uh, baseball during the, the pandemic. And, you know, we, we, we do want to, to showcase the diversity, the um, openness of our society and, and the, the many aspects of our culture and creativity as we express to the world our desire uh, to be that force for good. That part about soft power is very interesting, isn't it? It is. I mean, I think it's so wonderful how Taiwan has used so many hashtag campaigns to yes. capture the imagination, to charm the world with what we really are, our spirit, our culture, our food, and our very friendly and uh, hearts and, and goodwill. That's right. You know, I think the government really has made an effort to change the way it communicates, not just domestically here in Taiwan via social media, but also with the rest of the world. There's a lot of creativity in there. That's right. And I also had the privilege of talking with her about, you know, economic ties, women in politics. Um, and also she's going to be working on getting Moderna max vaccines uh, to Taiwan Great. on schedule. Mm -hmm. So all that and more um, in my full interview with her, which is on YouTube. YouTube and Facebook. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. Things are pretty tense right now. In less than a week, Taiwan has seen more than a thousand new COVID cases. That's not so bad compared to the rest of the world, you're thinking. But for a little perspective, at the end of April, Taiwan only accumulated about 1,100 cases total since the beginning of the pandemic. So to have those numbers suddenly double in the matter of days is a little nerve wracking. People in Taiwan are also readjusting to the reality of school closures, remote working, and social distancing. Some of the images in the news might make your hair stand on end like this one, this one, and this one. Those anxiety inducing images might seem like something out of a movie about the end of the world. But while we're on the topic of apocalyptic images, have a look at this one. That is a photo of Taipei City in an area that's usually very busy. As you'll notice, the streets are dead empty. Now, that photo may also look like an image of the end of the world, but unlike the others, that picture brings me immense comfort. Well, all right, this guy's obviously a sociopath, you're thinking, but I assure you, I have a good reason for finding joy in a cityscape devoid of people. Shortly after this outbreak, officials asked people to stay indoors to stop the spread of the virus. That picture is proof of Taiwan's compliance and a symbol of the people's collective will to beat COVID-19, and it just brings me so much comfort. We're the multi-celled organisms here. We're not going down to no microbes. People started sharing pictures of Taipei's empty streets on social media. President Tsai Ing-wen herself thanked people for exercising self-restraint over the weekend and choosing to stay home. There were pictures of empty shopping malls, movie theaters, bus stops, subway stations, you name it. Now, these photos might spell trouble for the economy, and there's no denying that. But for me, the more significant takeaway is that if we can keep this up, 
then we have a real shot of beating this thing, and that helps me sleep at night. Before we leave you, a look at some other stories on our radar. Taiwan has set up rapid COVID-19 testing sites in areas that have seen large numbers of recent cases. The tests are free, but Health Minister Chen Shizhong says the only people who should get them are people with COVID-19 symptoms, people who've been in contact with confirmed patients, or people whose travel history matches a current patient. A shipment containing 400,000 more doses of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine arrived in Taiwan on Wednesday. Officials say it will take at least a week before they are available for use. Their arrival comes amid a sharp jump in domestic COVID-19 cases. Taiwan saw a second day of widespread rolling blackouts this past week. The first time, on May 14th, was caused by human error at Kaohsiung's Xinda power plant. It affected over 4 million households. The Xinda plant was not yet back to normal when a surge in demand on Monday led to blackouts affecting 660,000 households. The government has ordered the state-run Taiwan Power Company to submit an improvement plan within a week. Taiwan has topped a list of the world's best places to be an expat for the third year in a row. The list is the result of an annual survey by expat network Internations. Respondents rated Taiwan's medical system and quality of life particularly high compared to the global average. Now, a lot of people have been working from home this week. So our final question of the day is, what is your favorite thing to do at home? Okay, well, mine is to declutter. <laughs> I found this very refreshing, getting rid of things I don't like or don't need, and it really renews the whole home. Are you using the Marie Kondo method? Uh, that and others. Excellent. Minimalism, too. Love it. <laughs> All right, mine? Bake. Oh, that's even better. I have become a <laughs> pandemic things. cliche because I have baked bread already. Really? <laughs> yes. It's wonderful. Of course, I was going to say sleep, but for the purpose of our show, I went with bake. <laughs> 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 well, thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Taiwan Insider. Be sure to connect with us on social media. Yes, like, subscribe, and leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. For Taiwan Insider, I'm Natalie So, And I'm Andrew Ryan. See you next week.